The new Pokemon Go season brings new field research tasks and rewards. And in this video, I'm going to go through which research tasks you can do at any level to get the best Pokemon. Luckily, these are mostly quick and easy to do. I'll also go through which ones you can skip to save yourself some time and effort. Firstly, the task that is make five curveball throws will get you either of these items. It's generally a quick and easy to do task with the best reward being 500 Stardust. Make five nice throws is another easy task to do and it'll get you one of these item rewards or an encounter with either Diggler, Alolan Diggler or Pseudo Wudo. Again, it is an easy task to do, but the Pokemon that you can get don't have any meta relevance, so it is low priority unless you're shiny hunting. The make 10 nice throws task will get you either Nidoran male or female, both of which can be shiny. And Nidoran female does have some relevance because Nidoqueen is pretty decent in the Ultra League at rank 92. It does however want 0, 14, 15 IVs to be at its best, which is the case for a lot of these Pokemon from research, and the field research IV floor is 10, 10, 10, making it pretty hard to get those IVs. But honestly, it is still worth in using the Pokemon even if you don't have the perfect PvP IVs. Making three nice throws in a row and make two nice curveballs in a throw will give you these items. These tasks aren't really worth doing unless you need the items specifically. The make two great throws task however will get you these items or encounters with Omanyte, Kabuto, Clampearl, Algium or Binnacle. None of these Pokemon really have any meta relevance but there are some reasons that you want to hunt them. Omanyte and Kabuto are rare fossil Pokemon that are mostly only seen during Adventure Week and you do need them for parts of the Let's Go Meltan research if you haven't completed it yet. Clampearl is also a perma boosted Pokemon meaning instead of the 1 in 512 base shiny rates it has a 1 in 64 shiny rate meaning you do have a pretty good chance of getting the shiny. When it comes to the make 5 great throws task I would recommend doing this one because you can get some strong and useful Pokemon from it. This task rewards you with a Mankey or a Machop encounter. Mankey's evolution Annihilate is one of the best Pokemon in Go Battle League. It's ranked 16 in the Great League, 24 in the Ultra League and 49 in the Master League. It also doesn't require any legacy moves so that's another advantage for it. The other possible encounter is Machop and Machamp is a decent budget fighting type attacker and it is one of the best in its shadow form. Machamp is also a decent Pokemon in Go Battle League being ranked 63 in the Great League, 102 in the Ultra League and 109 in the Master League. The task that requires you to make three great throws in a row might be worth doing depending on your ability to hit consistent great throws. The rewards can be either of these items or you can get encounters with Anorith or Lilith. If the reward is Rare Candy I would say it's worth it because Rare Candy is a very valuable item you can turn it into any Pokemon's candy which is especially useful for Origin Dialga and Origin Palkia's adventure effects. If it's an encounter as a reward it's only worth doing if you're hunting the shiny or if you need them for special research like the Let's Go Meltan research. The task that wants you to make three great curveball throws I would say is only really worth doing it for the Stardust or Rare Candy rewards. This is another low priority task. Make five great curveball throws is worth doing because both of the possible encounters, Shield On or Kranidos, are strong Pokemon in Pokemon Go. Kranidos's evolution Rampardos is one of the best rock type attackers and it's the best in terms of DPS in its shadow form. Shield On's evolution Bastidon is one of the best Pokemon in the Great League being ranked 13. There is also a task that requires you to do five great curveball throws in a row which can be pretty tricky to do but it does reward Spinder which is exclusive to field research and it also has a boosted shiny rate of 1 in 64. It doesn't have any meta relevance though so it depends on what your priorities are. The make an excellent throw task rewards these items so it can be skipped unless you want these items specifically. But the make two excellent throws task is worth doing because it does give a guaranteed encounter with Bagon. And Mega Salamence is one of the best dragon type raid attackers in the game. One of the more difficult tasks to do is to make three excellent throws in a row but the rewards are really good. You can get an encounter with either Larvitar, Beldum or Gibble which do evolve into some of the best Pokemon in the game. Firstly for Larvitar, Mega Tyranitar is the best dark type attacker and one of the best rock type attackers and Tyranitar itself is ranked 94 in the Master League. Beldum's evolution Metagross is the best non-shadow steel type attacker and it's the best in its shadow form. It will also have a Mega coming in the future which is even stronger and will be the best steel type attacker. Metagross is also ranked 45 in the Master League. For Gibble, Mega Garchomp is the second best dragon type attacker and is ranked 37 in the Master League. With these rewards this is a high priority research task. Next we have the exploring tasks and which of these are actually worth doing. For the hatch and egg task you can get an encounter with these Pokemon. Scyther has relevance in the fact that Mega Scizor is a top bug type attacker and both Scyther and Ninkada have perma boosted shiny rates. Outside of that Trubbish also gives boosted Stardust so that's pretty useful to get as well. For hatching two eggs you can get either of these Pokemon. Sneasel's evolution Weavile is a decent budget ice type attacker and one of the best in its shadow form. Galarian Stunfisk is a strong Pokemon in the Great League being ranked 20 and is ranked 56 in the Ultra League. Other than this, this is also a great task for shiny hunters because all possible encounters have perma boosted shiny rates of 1 in 64. The explore 3 kilometers task
Tusk will reward you with either of the Growliths, and you could skip this one unless you're hunting the Shinies. For spinning three Pokestops or Gyms, this can be a very easy task to do depending on where you play, and for the rewards, Routes is a standout encounter with Mega Gardevoir being the best fairy type attacker in the game. And also its other evolution, Gallade, will also get a Mega in the future that will be a top 10 Psychic and Fighting type attacker. Gallade is also ranked 84 in the Great League and 80 in the Ultra League, and it's ranked even higher in its Shadow form. With these possible rewards and the fact that it's generally quick and easy to do, this is a high priority field research task. For spinning 5 Pokestops and Gyms, you can get encounters with these Pokemon, which again have no meta relevance so you could really skip this one. The task that requires you to take a snapshot of a wild Pokemon will get you an encounter with either Trapinch, Crowagunk or Cottony. None of these Pokemon have any particular meta relevance so it's not really worth doing this one. You can also get the task that requires you to take snapshot of different wild grass types or one for wild bug types, but these encounters have no current current meta relevance either so they can be skipped. The task that requires you to take 3 snapshots of different wild ground type Pokemon however is definitely beneficial because you can get Drillba from it and Excadrill is a decent ground and steel type attacker. So moving on to the buddy and friendship tasks. The task that requires you to earn 2 candies walking with your buddy can reward an encounter with either of these Pokemon and out of these Bunnelby's Evolution Diggersby is ranked 70 in the Great League and Jigglypuff's Evolution Wigglytuff is ranked 78 in the Great League. The task that requires you to earn 3 candies while walking with your buddy will get you either of the stun fisks and the Galarian one in particular is worth going after like I mentioned previously. For the send 5 gifts and add a sticker to them and the trade a Pokemon tasks you will get these rewards and none of the Pokemon here have any meta relevance. When it comes to the AR scanning tasks they are only really worth doing if they reward a Poffin. For the Team Go Rocket specific tasks the defeating 3 Rocket Grunts task will get you an encounter with Sableye and purifying 3 Shadow Pokemon will get you an encounter with Skarmory and Skarmory is a strong Pokemon in Go Battle League being ranked 7 in the Great League and ranked 17 in the Ultra League. For the catching tasks, which ones offer the best rewards? The reward for catching 5 Pokemon will get you Rattata, Sentret or Zigzagoon, all of which can be shiny but they don't have any meta relevance so this one can be skipped. The catch 7 Pokemon task will get you something better, one of the rewards being Magikarp which is worth going after because Mega Gyarados is a top 10 water and dark type attacker and Gyarados itself is ranked 26 in the Master League. Also Wimpod's evolution Galizapod is also worth going after because it is decent in the Master League league being ranked 62. The catch 10 Pokemon gives these items and it's only really worth doing this one for 3 rare candies. For the catching a dragon type Pokemon you can get some pretty solid Pokemon encounters so I would recommend doing this one whenever you get it. Axew's Evolution Haxorus is a decent dragon type attacker and it is ranked 103 in the Master League so not a bad option there. Like I mentioned previously for Bagon, Mega Salamence is one of the best dragon type attackers and for Dratini, Dragonite is a strong dragon type attacker in its shadow form but where it shines most is in Go Battle League. So it is decent in the Great League and in the Ultra League being ranked 85 and 104 respectively, but in the Master League it is one of the best Pokemon being ranked 4. The Catch 5 Bug or Grass type Pokemon will get you one of the Burmese which don't have any meta relevance so it is low priority. Catching 5 Psychic or Fighting types will get you an encounter with one of these Pokemon and the standout one here being Meditite because Medicham is ranked 25 in the Great League. The Catch a Ditto task can get you these rewards but it can be a hard task to do because Ditto is generally quite rare. Catching 10 Normal type Pokemon can get you Mega Pidgeot energy and Mega Pidgeot is a top 10 flying type attacker. Catching 10 grass type Pokemon can get you Mega Energy for Venusaur or Sceptile. Mega Venusaur is one of the best grass type attackers but Mega Sceptile is even better being the best grass type attacker in the game. Venusaur however is also decent in Go Battle League being ranked 66 in the Great League and 50 in the Ultra League. I would recommend doing this task if the reward is either of these Mega Energies. Likewise catching 10 fire type Pokemon can get you Mega Energy for Charizard or Blaziken. Mega Blaziken is the best fighting type attacker in the game and the second best fire type attacker, losing out only to Mega Charizard at the top. Charizard is also ranked 41 in the Ultra League, so it's definitely worth doing these tasks if it rewards these energies. The research task that requires you to catch 10 water type Pokemon can get you Mega Energy for Blastoise or Swampert. Mega Blastoise is a top water type attacker and Blastoise is ranked 71 in the Ultra League. Mega Swampert on the other hand is even better as a water type attacker than Mega Blastoise, being the second best overall. It's also a top 10 ground type attacker, so it is worth doing these tasks if they reward these Mega Energies. Completing the catch 7 different species of Pokemon task will get you a guaranteed encounter with Hisui and Quillfish and its evolution Overquill is a top 10 poison type attacker. Catching 15 different species of Pokemon will get you a guaranteed Bronzor encounter. This one doesn't have much meta relevance but it is perma boosted at 1 in 64. Catching 5 weather boosted Pokemon is an easy task to do and you can get an encounter with either of these Pokemon or items. And in particular Poliwag is a good encounter because Poliwrath is ranked 45 in the Great League and ranked 4 in the Ultra League. Politoed is also ranked 62 in the Ultra League. Wingull is another decent encounter because 
Palapa is ranked 27 in the Great League and 25 in the Ultra League. It's also worth noting that Snova is available from this task and Mega Obama Snow is a top 10 ice type attacker and Obama Snow is ranked 101 in the Great League and 52 in the Ultra League. So because of these rewards and the fact it's easy to do, this task is definitely one that's worth doing. For catching 10 weather boosted Pokemon, you can get these items, which is again easy to do, but the rewards aren't really that good. And the use five raspberries to help catch Pokemon task can get you these items in encounters. Swine up here is well worth going after because Mamoswine is one of the best ice type attackers and it's the best ice type attacker in its shadow form. It's also ranked 32 in the Master League. So moving on to the battling tasks, winning in the Battle League will get you an encounter with Poliwag, Chinchow, and Grubbin, all of which have some meta relevance in Go Battle League. Poliwag is strong in the Go Battle League, like I mentioned previously. Chinchow's evolution Lantern is ranked 10 in the Great League and 22 in the Ultra League, and Grubbin's evolution Charger Bug is ranked 68 in the Great League. For the win a raid task, you get a guaranteed encounter with Lickitung, which is ranked 3 in the Great League and has a 1 in 64 shiny rate. Winning two raids will get you a guaranteed encounter with Snorlax, which is ranked 68 in the Master League, and for winning five raids, you will get an encounter with Alolan Marowak, Alolan Exeggutal, or Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl is needed for the Let's Go Meltan research, and Mega Aerodactyl is a top 10 rock type attacker. Outside of this though, the rewards really aren't worth doing five raids, so I don't recommend focusing this one. And lastly, for the training tasks, evolving a Pokemon will reward you with Eevee. This could be worth doing because Eevee's evolution Glaceon is a top 10 ice type attacker, Sylveon is a top 10 fairy type attacker, and Umbreon is decent in Go Battle League, being ranked 61 in the Great League and 106 in the Ultra League. The power up a Pokemon three times task will get you either Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle. This one is worth doing because all three have meta relevance like I mentioned earlier. Powering up five Pokemon will get you one of these rewards, and in particular Snivy is a good encounter because Superior is ranked 29 in the Great League and 54 in the Ultra League. Mega Energy for Venusaur, Charizard, Blastoise, and Pidgeot are all worth going after like I mentioned previously if you haven't Mega Evolved one before. And also you can get Mega Manectric Energy from this and it is the best electric type Mega and a top five overall electric type attacker. Powering up a Pokemon seven times will get you an encounter with one of the Alolan starters which don't really have any meta relevance. And lastly, the power up a Pokemon ten times will get you Mega Energy for Ampharos, Gardevoir or Lopunny. The energy for Mega Gardevoir being the best reward with the fact that Mega Gardevoir is the best fairy type attacker in the game. Generally, any task that gives you Mega Energy for a Pokemon you haven't Mega Evolved yet is worth going after because you might be able to get enough Mega Energy from these tasks so you don't have to raid it and waste a raid pass. You can get some strong PvP Pokemon and and raid attackers from these research tasks and if you want to put these raid attackers to use you might want to know which are the best raid pokemon coming up this month you can find out that information in this video